Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is Pi Day, also known as March 14th of 2022. And I haven't uploaded in a while, so I thought, well, I should make a video today. And since it's Pi Day, I'll make a math video. So, today I'll be discussing, let me just type it out, I'm too lazy to write it. Alright, this is going to be flow and divergence. Um, so this is going to be a guide to how they actually work. Now, I'm assuming, I'm skipping a, a couple steps here, that you know about line integrals, and you also know about circulation. Um, circulation is the counterclockwise line integral uh, in a loop, uh, closed loop. So it's kind of like if you had a line that kind of looked like this, or a loop that looked like this, and then you wanted the circulation, the line integral along this um, this circle here. So you go around counterclockwise because you know that's the standard. I don't know why, but probably has something to do with um, just the way that the people first did it, and then that kind of stuck. All right. Anyway, so. Um, you take the line integral, you go around, um, you do this, uh, ds or something, s might be lowercase, probably uppercase though, and then you have the force vector um, dotted with the whatever is, um, whatever the vector is that I think it's velocity, they call it, yeah. Um, so you dot those vectors, and then you get that integral. And this is circulation. All right, so that's circulation. Flux is, um, flux is like, instead of going in the same direction as the velocity of your loop, you're going to go like this. So you're still gonna go counterclockwise, but, um, the force, the force field, you're gonna calculate the amount of it that's going outside. So not in the same direction. Maybe I should make this more clear because you're still going counterclockwise um, for your integral, just not for your actual, uh, what's it called? The amount of force field going outside. So, you're still going to go tangent. Uh, I'm just drawing this to be tangent right now. So you're going tangent for circulation, but for uh, flux, spelled like this, you're going to go outside. So um, your force field can go like, you know, inside, but that would just be negative. So you see what I'm saying. Um, and the formula for that would be this. F dot the normal vector and then ds all right so uh, these two are very similar the difference is one is going tangent uh, to the velocity for the amount of force whereas for the flux the force uh, which is based on a function it's different at every single point on the plane it will be going, uh, you're calculating the amount of it that's going normal to your surface, counterclockwise, pointing outside. So now let's delete all of this because you don't have to do a line integral. And by the way, this symbol, that means you're doing a line integral in a circle, closed loop, because uh, you can do like this, right? That would qualify as um, if you were doing the... Um, the circulation, this would work out. Let's say you're starting here, you go around, and then you calculate the, um, you know, the f dot n, and then you do the the thing here. Sorry, this burp. All right, that would still be circulation. Now, according to Green's theorem, there is a relationship between the line integral. Uh, let's call it the line integral. 
line and area. I can't spell area. Okay, so basically, there's a relationship between doing a single integral, you know, in a closed loop, and doing a double integral over the area. So you can go um, around, or you can just get some function here. Let's call it um, I don't know, g, some function g or other whatever you want to call it, and do it over the area. And now I'll tell you what that is. So let's just do circulation first. And you can imagine if you wanted to do the circulation at a single point, uh, I don't know, for a loop using area, you need to get the circulation at every single infinitesimally small point inside of that area. And maybe if you add those up, it'll work out in your favor. So how would that work? Well, imagine this, right? Let's say this is your um, this is your closed loop that you want the um, circulation for. And uh, this is a region R. Now within this region, uh, let's have many, many small uh, squares, infinitesimally small. Let's actually zoom in for this. Oh, all right. So, so this is one and imagine that you have your field going around it counterclockwise. And then let's say you had a bunch of these and then you line them up. I'll just draw four. And then for each of these, they all have their own um, circulation. And now that we've gotten back to the, the right side of this starting square, so now it's gonna go down, you see, because for the right one, you're going around and around and around, and by the time you get to the left side, you'll be going downwards. Now what does that mean? Well, the upwardness of the, um, the left square, it's actually going upwards. Okay, uh, okay, that was kind of redundant. Let me explain it better. So for the left squares, uh, line integral or circulation, this right side will be going up. Whereas, since it's the same line, right, for the right one, it'll be going downwards at the same value because it's at the same point. And the force is the same at that point based on the you know fxy or gxy or something. Uh, where g is a vector. So, basically, that cancels out. Now let's do the top two. So we see immediately for um, our friend on the top left here, he wants to have the bottom line integral go rightwards, but that cancels out once again with the top one of the bottom left square. So that cancels out. Uh, let's just mark everyone that cancels out in red. So that one, that one. Now let's continue. So. He still wants to go counterclockwise. All right, next square, top right. So now we start on the bottom. It wants to go right, but the bottom square below it, it wants to go left. So that cancels out. Um, let's continue. So now the right side goes up, this side goes left, this side goes down. And again, it cancels out. All right, so what's the pattern here? Well. Take a moment, think about it. That's right. Basically, if you do many uh, of these circulations, many circulation, many, many circulations, if you line them up together, they will become the entire circulation. So that converts into entire circulation. So, I hope this makes sense. Now, for the exciting part. Um, move that back to 100, all right. So, what does this mean 
for us? Well, basically, if there's a function that we can find for uh, the mini circulation at any given point, then we'll be set. So what is that? Well, how about this? Let's try to develop it on our own. We know that we're gonna, we're gonna need a double integral. Let's write that first so that we can generalize it to any single problem. Um, all right, so um, double integral over a region. You can do dA since we know that we're gonna have a function in here already. So it's just gonna be the area Actually, the, the region is actually important, never mind. All right, so, um, yeah, the reason it's not area is because um, depending on where your circle is with respect to, like, the origin, it, it changes the um, amount of force flowing through it. So let's call this um, inner function. Let's call it flow. Um, and that's actually what it's called. So flow is the mini version, circulation is the big version. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Now, um, what will this be? Well, let's first think about our force vector function. Uh, let's call it just f. And then it's a function of x and y. Um, and then it looks like this. Uh, it looks like m and n. So you have a function m that will be the uh, x value or the x co or the i component of the um, of the force vector function. And then n will be the j component of the force vector function. So we can use this to again think about our um, what's it called our flow all right so how do we think about this well let's again go back to our diagram uh, let's just draw a square all right here we go and then we're going to go counterclockwise so when should our flow be positive? That should be our major question. When is flow, let's use the plus sign, that's our question. When is it positive? Well, for this single line integral, let's say that there's the force f uh, of x and y behind it in the background. Well, for this function, I would like to see, let's say that there's a very small value that goes up on the left side. Um, and again, we're, we're trying to go parallel to the, uh, to the line integrals or circulation. Uh, and on the left side, let's say that the force is going upwards, the vector, by a little amount. We don't care about the horizontal amount because that's going to be perpendicular to our uh, line integral on this side. So we it's going up by a little amount. And what will make the sum of all the line integrals positive? Well, that is our question actually. So let's just say this, right, because currently it's going negative by a small amount. And the reason it's going negative is because it's going against our will here, or not our will, it's, a go it's going against what we want because it's going in the opposite direction of our circulation. So what will we do? Well, um, we can make the right value as big as we want. It, it can go in any direction, just not left and right. It can go up and down, however much we want. And what do we want to make the flow positive? Well, it should go along the line integral on the right. That makes sense because this is negative by a small amount and this is positive by a big amount. So that means if the force uh, F up there, right? if this is bigger on the right, 
smaller on the left, then it should check out, and it means that uh, flow will be positive just in this, um, just for these two line line integrals. Now let's think about uh, the top and the bottom. So let's just start on the bottom again. Um, let's just say that um, we have a force that is um, going right, let's say a medium amount, not as much as on the right. Let's say it's just going right by a medium amount. And that means that our flow is currently positive. And now let's think about the top one. Well, the top one should be smaller because it's going the opposite direction of our line integral. So basically, if the bottom is going right by more than the left is, or the top, or the top is, then we're going to have a positive flow in terms of the top and the bottom. Now let's combine these into words. So M, so M should go up. Uh, wait, no. All right, so let's think about this more carefully. So when we say that this is going um, upwards and this is going upwards and the value is increasing, we have to think about what the variable actually is. So the variable here is the vector, the force vector in the background. The force vector in the background for these, because they're going upwards, is the y component. It's n. n is what's pointing upwards. So that is our variable. But then when we say that it should get bigger as it goes to the right, isn't that a derivative with respect to x being greater than zero? Because the rate of change uh, of the y component of the vector function increases uh, or yeah, increases with respect to x because we're moving right to compare these two vertical lines, uh, yet they are vertical. That means they're n, the y component or the j component of our vector. Oops, all right. Um, accidentally pressed the Windows key. Next, all right. Now we have the top and the bottom to worry about. Let's put a comma. So the lines here, they're going horizontally. That means that they are related to M. So these are the force, the, these are the force vectors in the background. And when we say that it gets smaller as you go up, that means um, when we say as we go up, that's kind of relating to Y. That's going to be a uh, derivative again. So the derivative or the rate of change of M or the X component of our vector function uh, with respect to Y should decrease because you know it gets shorter uh, as we increase in Y. There we go. Oh no, not the, the derivative does not decrease with respect to Y but the value of m does. So that should be true. All right, now that we know these two things, let's um, fill in the blanks. So it's, it's just one blank actually. All right, so um, to sum it up, well, shouldn't it just be these two things added up? Shouldn't it be nx plus my? Well, let's try that. Let me write that neater though. Um, all right, let's see what happens here. Well, um, in the case that my is greater than zero, um, my is greater than zero, then it should kind of be like subtraction. Oh, wait. Let's see. 
Well, it doesn't really check out. So it might make more sense to have my be negative because we demand that it decreases. So if it decreases, then we have positive flow. This is assuming positive, by the way. If it's positive, then we have negative flow, but that doesn't really check out. Uh, I mean, if we were to add my, what would really happen? I haven't really thought about that. Um, because it should kind of just decrease the flow, right? Um, whatever. So this is kind of the rationale behind nx minus my. It just keeps making the flow go up. Um, right. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so flow goes up as um, NY, my decreases. So essentially, if this is a negative quantity, it makes the flow go up. So the more that my goes down, the more that flow goes up. And this makes sense. All right, that's why I've rationalized it. And now let's talk about divergence. Now divergence is very similar to um, our friend flow, uh, not from that insurance company, but uh, this thing. All right, so let's once again draw our square. Uh, we're going counterclockwise because that's the standard. You can look up why that's the standard later. Probably has something to do with um, the unit circle. All right, anyway. So we have our forces, uh, but this time we only care about, let, let me draw this differently actually. Let's draw the arrows here. I should have had some foresight. All right, so. Um, let me draw the forces in red this time to show that they are going to be normal. Although red doesn't really signify normalness. All right, so let's say we have a um, a force here. So once again, we have F, X, Y. And now we want to know what is going to be the flux integral or the integral for flux according to Green's theorem that there's some relationship between double integral and line integral. Um, all right, here uh, we're doing another dr. And then here, uh, we're gonna have the infinitesimal version once again. And um, you can go to that, um, that shape and then think about how it would work to have the um, the normalness or the 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 what's it called the flux at each point going outwards. Um, you can think about that for like each one canceling out, uh, but I'll leave you to do that. We can just uh, say that this is going to be the infinitesimal version, also known as divergence. All right, anyway, back to our model. So this is a very small square. We have our force vector pointing right, because that's actually all we care about for the left um, line integral. And the reason is because um, anything that's going to be parallel to it, also known as anything in the y direction, uh, that will be useless for our you know, the, the f dot n, that will be useless for us. All right, so let's say we have this quantity, this much rightness, and you'll notice that this is actually negative um, because if it were positive, it would point that way. So right now, oh, whoops, uh, control shift v, control y, okay. Um, if it were pointing this way, then we'd have positive. But now let's again assume that divergence is positive. And to make it positive, we need uh, something on the right side, beginning from here. 
uh, would it point left or would it point right? The answer is it would point right because um, the dot product, the normal vector points that way, by the way. Um, if you do something pointing right, then it'll be in the same direction as a normal vector, which means that the line integral will end up to be a positive value for this right line. Now, if the right value is more than the left value, then it checks out. We have achieved positive, um, a positive sum between the left integral and the right integral. Now, for the top and the bottom, let's say we have uh, this much pointing out, or let's say a medium amount. We don't want to assume that this is right. So we have a medium amount pointing upwards uh, from the bottom. And again, this is negative because it's not pointing outwards from the square, it's pointing inwards to the square. Uh, so on the top side, to counterbalance, we will have a long line on the top, uh, or a big vector on the top. And this means that um, we have achieved positive, uh, positive sum of the bottom line integral and the top line integral. All right, now that we know this, um, let's try to turn this into algebra again. So for the left and the right, that would be relating to, um, it really relates to the size of these red vectors. Again, that's relating to f. And if it's pointing right, uh, right and left, that means it's going to be m or the i component. And this time it's actually mx because it's changing with respect to x and it's pointing in the x direction. But we know that it has to get longer, also known as the rate of change is greater than zero. Um, next is the vertical ones. So here y is increasing, the length of the vector in, is increasing, the vector is n and since it's going upwards or changing with respect to y then we're going to do changing with respect to y greater than zero now we have these and we can plug it in let's write our answer mx plus ny so assuming that divergence is a uh, greater than zero these should be true because the more they're true the more this is true uh, the the bigger the values the bigger the divergence so they should be added up uh, all right or, or I shouldn't say they should be added up they should be added up because you know they contribute to this line integral but the reason they're positive is that uh, the bigger this is the bigger this is all right that's it for this video thank you guys for watching I hope you learned something and see you guys next time.